I see in the Farmers' Journal last week uh, that Minister Coveney is saying that he's acutely aware of the problems facing the Irish beef sector. Acutely aware. Great word. To be honest, I think that there's a lot of people in this society here and now who are well fed up of hearing members of Fine Gael and Labour Coalition telling us that they are acutely aware of our plight. Acutely aware doesn't cut it when what we need is action. There are times when the Minister on those benches over there are merely telling us that it's hurting them more than it's hurting us, that it's hurting them more than it's hurting the farming community. Well, that won't wash with Irish farmers anymore. It won't wash with the beef farmers, particularly. Twice last week, we had farmers at the door here protesting. They were angry, and to be honest, I'm angry on their behalf. In my lifetime, I have never seen two uh, mobilizations here in the one week by the IFA. And that in itself tells all of us that there's a crisis in the beef sector, and it needs to be sorted out. The big retail multiples are reducing their prices, while their own profit margins are growing at the expense of the farmer, the producer. Figures show that in 2013, the farmer received 57% of the average price of beef on the British retail market. The retail price per kilo has risen by 7%, but the farmer's share has dropped to 42%, and that is some whack to take. I repeat it. The farm get prices for Irish cattle has fallen by 15%, while the price of beef on the shelves of the British supermarket is up 7%. Beef farmers have lost income to the extent that they are in crisis. They have also lost confidence in the Minister, who on Marling Island last week publicly washed his hands of the crisis and said on the air that it was the market and that he could do nothing about it. He blames it on the market. We know that this government looks to the rich and powerful and ignore, ignores the plight of the more vulnerable. But this one takes the biscuit. Is Simon Coveney so divorced from reality of the Irish beef farmers' lives that he does not know what is happening in the industry? In response to this crisis, he set up a talking shop, they call it a round table, where the beef factories' representatives can talk to each other and tell us that we're all doing fine. I want to see the beef bonds before the Oireachtas Committee on Agriculture. We spoke about it this week, and we want to see them brought in before the Agricultural Committee. I want to see those powerful individuals who control this industry, and not their press, or their publicity executives, their PR men, or their image consultants. I want to see the beef bonds themselves, individually before our committee, to account for their actions. This industry is too important for the government to take a back seat and let these people run it and ruin the life, livelihoods of beef farmers and their families. Farmers who were encouraged by Chagas to rear bull beef found their prices collapsed and their sheds full of cattle they could not sell, and they are not impressed by this. The minister has sat on his hands and allowed the beef barons to call the shots and manipulate the market to the extent that some farmers have been pushed over the edge. There is an individual a beef baron out there that's known to every single one in this house. And his name comes up decade after decade, not year after year. And he was a leading, playing a leading role in the beef industry in this state, who is, it seems is allowed to do what he likes to manipulate that market. And he continues to do it. He is allowed to own and control a large herd of cattle at his whim. He can flood the market and collapse the prices, which he does. He is not alone on this. He has his allies scattered around the country. And when he wants to, and when they call the shots to bring the prices down, the farmer that or the cattle jobber that's bringing the cattle to, the, to his, his factories, they are, set, they are giving a price that is probably 5% below what they expect. They take a decision, well, we won't, we won't uh, send our cattle in. But what he does is lift the phone, and his people from around the country make sure that he has a supply of cattle at the market price, making it almost impossible for the, fa the farmer who is dependent to meet his overheads, meet his maybe repayments or whatever. He has to get rid of his cattle at, the, at that man's price and at other men's prices and, uh, who control this industry. And nothing is being done about it. This is continuing year in, year out. When they want to, they can manipulate the market to collapse the prices. And last week, out here, when there was pickets going on out here and, and, and uh, a mobilization of members of the IFA, what happened this week? Cut five cents again. 
So this is what they can do. The all-powerful, this cartel, sitting, uh, who have their, ex their representatives sitting around the round table, who came in here the, uh, with their representatives and done absolutely nothing but stonewall the whole, uh, whole meetings inside here in the committee. They are getting away with murder because they are allowed to be getting away with it. Any minister worth his salt would move to control this type of behaviour. But this government looks after the likes of him and the small man can go to the hill or go to the wall. The factories have abused their power and they continue to abuse their power. They have changed specifications at will. So they have driven down prices at will by penalising farmers, by penalising people who are struggling to put bread on the table. Farmers are tempted to abandon cattle at, at, at March currently. The prices being offered are so low. They are not making ends meet. They are producing at a loss. And the reason they are producing at a loss is because these beef barons out there are able to manipulate the market to suit their agenda, and they continue to do that. I raised it here in the chamber last week that many farmers suspect that the beef barons run the industry by this type of manipulation and by having access, crucially, to the AIMS database. I know the minister denied it here. Last week he denied it. Last week you were here, um, Minister Hayes, and he wasn't here. He didn't turn up to answer the questions. We sent along you to do answer the questions for him about the data management and transparency within the beef industry. And in fairness, you're doing your best to answer it. In an, an inevitable position, trying to answer something that everyone knows that they have access to. Yes, they have access to they, That's how they're able to manipulate the market along with flooding the market when it suits them. It is widely believed that the beef factories have access to this database, and the farm financial data as well. While farmers are not given access to figures collected by the department and the number of the cattle slaughtered each week, are the level, crucially the level, of inter-trading among, among meat factories. Unless the factory managers are clairvoyant, how do they know when finished cattle are coming on steam? You can't sit there and tell me in absolute terms that they haven't got access. You can't do it. No, you can't, because you don't know who's within your department could be leaking it to them. You don't know. Yes, but it's happening. There's been bought. It's happening. And nothing has been done about it. Deputy Ferris has the floor, please. We can see that the representatives from the beef factories that turn up to the round table circus are always vague and invasive on this answer. No one is prepared to say what is the situation with slaughter cattle. This talking shop is going nowhere because it's not getting to the bottom of what is happening here. Manipulation of the market by the beef barons, access, suspicion of access to the database, knowing when cattle come on base so that they can determine the price and they can bring, get the cattle at their wish, their wish price. Will the so-called new transparency and promises include the figures for the number of cattle slaughtered and the inter-trading between the factories? Is it proving it? Is there any evidence coming out of these wrong table talks to prove that or to deal with that? We have the same old excuses that this is commercially sensitive. Commercially sensitive for who? Commercially sensitive for the profits that the beef farms are making and continue to make at the expense of the farmer that is producing. Commercially sensitive is what this government is, is protecting and backing up as against the rights and entitlements of the farmer, the producer. We hear the same old excuses all the time. Information that the beef factories won't allow it to be published. All powerful beef factories, we won't allow this to be published. Well, the minister would want to take, as, take a stand on behalf of the farmers and would not allow the factories to call all the shots because that's what they are doing, Minister. They are calling all the shots at the expense of the farmers right around this country. We need a beef regulator to oversee how this industry is operating. Because, above all, it is not fair. It is anything but fair. There should be transparency and equal opportunity to producers, the farmers who produce the cattle. This is not a question of market forces. It is a question of unfair advantage to the factories, where they have the figures and the farmers do not. The traditional trade with the north, where cattle dealers come down to the south to buy cattle, has collapsed too. It's known as normal cattle at the moment. Labelling issues have been used as a pretext to create barriers to this trade. The Sinn Féin Minister of the North, Michelle O'Neill, is happy to go to the EU looking for a derogation on the issue of labelling. Happy to go for a, der a derogation. The Sinn Féin Minister for Agriculture has met with representatives from the farming groups, including the IFA, to listen to the concerns of the farmers. She is concerned about current beef prices. We all are. All of us here are. 
and has planned to meet representatives from processors and retailers over the next couple of weeks to discuss the specifications which have recently been implemented. Michelle O'Neill is very concerned about the current global situation, which has negatively impacted on the cross-border trade of cattle. She has raised it with uh, Minister Simon Coveney, and I understand, and, and, and you, Minister Hayes, uh, and is now on a number of occasions wants, to he wants your agreement to seek a derogation from Europe due to the anomaly of, the, uh, of, the, uh, of, of what's happening at, the, at this point in time. We want a single Ireland produce label, which won't threaten traceability standards and can be achieved, so this can be fixed. But we can fix it. If the will is there, we can fix it. This, the situation as well, Minister, regarding this four four owners, that is another serious problem. Four owners plus, right? So what is happening here? Who has been penalised at the end of that? It is again the, the producer, the person that, that, that is selling the cattle is being, is being penalised for it. And what happens to the cattle when they go onto the chain? And they go through the arbiters on the chain, what happens to them? Is that, that the, if there are over four owners, is the cattle being, is the, the produce being sold cheaper? Is it? Sorry, deputy, to the chair. Uh, it, no, the, the answer is no. It's no. We don't know. The answer is no. It means that if I'm penalised because I, I'm the fifth owner, or the, or the sixth owner of the cattle, I take my cattle to the to the to, to the factory. It goes up on chain. I'm penalised because there's more than four owners. It goes into the food chain. All along, there is no difference in the price. The person that goes in the retail, the, 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 the customer that goes into buys pays the exact same price for it. So that's what's happening. And what is that? Is that not fraudulent? I had a man on to me this evening, a, 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 a man who buys a lot of cattle around the country, rang me this evening. He told me, and he, he, he stressed it, he said, I bought cattle to the, the last number of weeks, I bought cattle to the factories. I didn't even ask for a price. What does that tell you? Why? He, he couldn't even ask for a price. He is broken. He is broken by the way they have manipulated the market for their selfish the benefits. The way they have manipulated the market to get every ounce of blood off of the producer. And that is what is happening. And it's happening in your watch. It's happening, it's happening, happening for years. Nobody's done anything about it. So something has to be done about it. And it's up to you, the government, to put something in place so we have a transparency, so we know. So, yeah, fish, put fish. a regulator. Yeah. Regulators, for a start. If you're not going to regulate, you allow these people to do what they want and they continue to do what they want. They're not interested in what is good for the Irish producer or for the farmer. They are interested in what they put into their own pocket and for their shareholders. They don't give a goddamn about the producer. They never have. But they continue to get away with it. It's time that this government grew a pair of balls. It's time you stood up to them. It's time you took them on and said enough is enough. You know, I know, everybody in this house knows who is the main person out there. Every one of you know him. Two minutes, sir. He's got away, got away with it for years. And he's continuing to get away with it. And he's one of the main people that's manipulating the, the market. And plus there's nothing being done about it. So we need to, to do something to give, protect these people so they can continue to, uh, continue to put, have a livelihood, continue to live in rural Ireland, continue to have an income, continue to have a, continue to have a viable income. But you will not do it by a round table talk, a circus, where they send in their representatives, their PR people, where they put their spin on it, the very same as they've done here in the committee, and we want them in individually, and Deputy Andrew Dial, the chairperson, a very good chairperson, I, I, I want to say as well, is prepared to try and get him in individually. And that's what we want. We want to sit across the table, look at them into their eyes, and challenge them, and make them, make them justify what they are doing. Come on. And I'm Michael Healy-Rays. Queen Nomad.